Hey folks, I'm Lance Eaton, and this short video will cover five tips about using AI in career services. If you want to know more about me, feel free to check out the description where you'll see a link to my newsletter and other resources you can find uh, about me and the things that I'm doing in this space around AI and education. So we've got a lot to cover here, and these are our main objectives. We're going to go through these pretty quickly, but there's a lot to follow up and a lot of useful resources in that document at the bottom there. You'll also find that in the description. Uh, that resource link includes a lot of the things I'm going to say here. It's going to include a lot of amazing prompts for you to try out, as well as the outputs and what those look like. It's all covered with a Creative Commons license, so if you want to take a look at it, share, use, what have you, you're always welcome to. So let's get started. Our first focus is thinking about how we might be using AI in the context of our work. What are the things we need to bring to how we think about using the tool at our respective institutions, particularly in this area of career services? So career services are the ambassadors and guides for students to whatever comes next. They are here to shepherd students into that world as being as best prepared as possible, which means understanding, supporting, and engaging with students around AI is imperative. So what can that look like? Career services can leverage AI in three essential ways that can significantly prepare students for what comes next. The first is that they can demonstrate the ways that students can use AI to develop insights about their experiences to find more effective and nuanced explanations of their work. AI can also be, be an infinitely helpful resource in code switching and accessing the hidden curriculum or the hidden agenda of the world of employment with all of its bias laden traps throughout the hiring process and beyond. Finally, it can be used to help the student challenge their own assumptions or thoughts through, through interactions. For instance, students may be more willing to say what they really feel about a bot or to say what they really feel with a bot rather than a human uh, who they have a relationship with. This might really help them clarify what they want and need. Sometimes a student is just not going to tell you like, I just want money or I want this or I want that. They may not tell that to a human, but they may actually be able to say that or speak to that more clearly with a, thi with a thing rather than a person. All right, so, but AI is also helpful in preparing them for their professional world. Right, using it to to be under to to understand the industries uh, in, that they're interested in, get a better sense of the roles they're seeking, and realizing the role of AI in those industries. And then finally, in career services, you can leverage AI to help students bridge that space between the student and the job, helping them imagine and simulate what it could be. That includes allowing them to test out their preparedness by answering interview, answering interview questions by an AI, and then actually having the AI also evaluate those answers in prep for a job interview, or getting guidance and insight as they start up at a job. Okay, but how might we individually be using this and getting ourselves situated in this? Of course, if we're going to bring that framework to our campuses, we have to get familiar and comfortable with generative AI. To that end, we have to be playing with it and getting comfortable with it ourselves. So what are the ways that you might start using it? This is the low hanging fruit that can get you comfortable with, with using it and familiar with it. This might include having generative AI produce date listings or initial communications you plan to send out. It can also be getting quick visuals without ceaselessly searching, as well as refining content that you're looking, with, looking for or that you're working with. As you get settled into using it, there are some more things that I think is where it really gets interesting. You can use it to start to plan and scope out projects, build out content for students, faculties, and employer relations. Things like how-tos, tip sheets, guides for preparing for different paths, different parts of the job search. You can go even further and lean on AI tools that make multimedia creation much easier. Lastly, you can help build out training and workshops with everything from determining the pacing of trainings over the year to the content in the assessments. You can also start to use it to develop feedback that you might use for students seeking insight about their resumes and cover letters. And of course, starting to use it to review and analyze data to get an initial overview of, of that information. So what does it look like to use this tool uh, with other people in particular? Let's talk about some of the specific uses you might have with students. Showing students how to use AI to edit application materials such as reviewing for spelling, grammar, style, or industry standard language is a good start. It's also an opportunity to encourage them to, to use good prompts to solicit feedback from AI about their application materials. 
Finally, and some folks may not be excited about this, but yes, encouraging them to have AI start to draft application materials. Yes, they need to edit it, but for some folks, the blank screen is going to delay them in a way that no amount of judging them is going to help. So next, leveraging AI can be great in getting industry and job info, sometimes inside info, but uh, more just a, a deliberate understanding of what life is like at these places. There's also an opportunity for career services folks to develop personas for you to play with to help you in how you support students, as well as case studies that can help students think through challenges that they will run into in their employment. And of course, there's job prep opportunities with AI from generating questions, getting feedback for answers, and even help with salary negotiations. What's coming down the line, down the line is creating AI simulators for job applying process and working in different job con in new job contexts. Additionally, using AI as a space for professional learning and growth in the immediate role and the bigger picture. And of course, as you get students to engage with and play with AI, getting them to also be comfortable discussing and demonstrating their skills with using AI will also be really powerful and important for them as they're going into fields and industries where this will be an expectation. Okay, what are the practices that we want to encourage and discourage as we use generative AI? Particularly because we're still early in understanding all of the implications of these tools, there's a few things to keep in mind. It is essential that you help to guide student in thoughtful use of these tools as they go into their professions. Continue to try different things. In the guide, you'll see there's lots of different prompts to try out. Collect as many use cases as you can to help you think through how to best use it. Along those lines, try different tools to learn the contours of AI across different areas of use. Document your usage. Make meaning, uh, meaning make sure that you keep track of what you're doing with it. This is helpful for your own development as well as for folks you work with uh, that you want to encourage usage. And of course, you always want to note when you're using it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but cite AI whenever you can, right? And again, it doesn't have to be a perfect citation, but just make sure it's known that you're using it. Okay, but what should you not do? Well, assume students can't show you ins insightful uses of generative AI. Right? You can actually also learn from your students in how they're using this and actually have level up yourself and other people in the center in your in career services uh, by learning from students with it. Don't put any student data into uh, don't put any st student data into generative AI uh, without an institutional agreement with an AI tool and having your IT department saying it's OK. Along those lines, don't put student work into AI without their permission and understanding of what that means to put it in there. And of course, don't put private info of staff or other employer, uh, other employees or other employers that you're working with into generative AI either. All right, let's take a look at some specific prompts that can help you be more use these tools more effectively. So there are four areas that I find AI to be incredibly useful uh, in ways to contribute to my work and reduce the amount of time I need to work on things. We'll take a look at each of these. One thing to note here is that I'm going to go briefly is show and talk about a prompt. What follows is several screens with lots of text. Don't try to race to read it. You don't have to pause it. That's not the goal. Rather, I just want you to get a sense of what the, the inputs and outputs look like. Okay. All the prompts and the responses that you're going to see, these are all abbreviated and you can get the full ones on that resource document that's in the description below. Uh, the next slides are mostly just to give you this flavor of what you can expect. So AI can be a great task minimizer, not necessarily eliminating a task, but significantly reducing it. In this case, I asked it to review a student's work with a student group to identify the skill set they, they needed in order to do that work. And so it's a great way of helping students unpack and name their abilities, right? So here was a student they had worked on, uh, they were part of uh, a historical association at their college for four years, and they worked on different roles throughout those four years. And so I'm saying, like, what are my skills based upon this? And as you can see from the results, it identified at least seven different skills, explained how they were in play and why they are important. Imagine how this can help students get a better grasp of their abilities. When it comes to brainstorming, AI can identify a range of things that you might not have thought of and therefore extend your thinking about what you might do or how you might do it. In this prompt, I ask AI to act as a career coach to interview me and uncover marketable skills and abilities. 
through this conversation, a student can start to figure out what they are more interested and capable of and allow them to help start to plan in that direction. So I don't actually have results for this prompt because this is an interview. It's an iterative process. So you wouldn't really see a, you know, a, a full direct one result. This is something that we would go back and forth, which is also one of the powers of generative AI is its iterations. It's not just like with Google, you throw in one thing and that's it. You actually can continue to go back and forth in a way that produces more insights and can be a conversation. For many of us, the blank screen is intimidating. Having AI start to draft something can be incredibly helpful and allow us to build from there. In this prompt, I'm asking it to plan out a target list of potential employers. Again, it provides me with a starting point to which I can then build upon. In this case, I also ask it for the steps, the time duration, the reason for the step, an example of what that step might look like in a different industry. So. It's produced a nice table that lays out the steps, duration, reason, etc. Now, as a student, they can continue to ask questions uh, and be more specific about their industry and if any steps would change. But right out of the gate, it gives like, here's the map. Here's the things I want to do. Here's why I want to do them. If I want to learn more about any of these or have further guidance on these, I can start to build out a really good plan for how I'm going to tackle this that's personalized to the things that I want and I, I'm looking for. Finally, data analysis. The thing is, is that most of us can do this and also there's so much to do that if AI can help us process things a bit more quickly so we can do something else with, uh, with the analysis, then that feels like a win. In this case, I asked it to review data from the Rhode Island seasonally adjusted establishment employment to make sense of trends and what implications might be for a career center. The results showed me a really interesting mix of insights about the different industries as well as possible considerations about what they might mean for career center opportunities in this region. I can ask it more questions about the data or move deeper into implications for students graduating in the next two years and how a career center might help them. And that's kind of the really cool thing here is just how much it allows you to build upon and think through um, that through the data and then well, how you might apply that. In one final bonus tip to improve your prompting outputs with generative AI, the first question to always, always be asking generative AI is not the question you go there with, but it is a question to improve that question. So in this case, I usually start every prompt with Improve this prompt to maximize the creativity and analytical abilities of a large language model. And then I insert my prompt. The new prompt that the AI provides is the prompt that I actually use and it gets me better results. So basically what I'm doing is when I go to AI, I'm saying, hey, I, I have this prompt. I want you to improve it in a way that is helpful or can get the most out of a large language model generative AI tool. So here's my prompt. Improve it. It spits out a better prompt. I now take that prompt and that's when I start my conversation and I get better results for it. So it's a really useful way to always think about, you know, whatever you put in, can you make it better? And I also like it because it teaches me what are the things that the AI is, it finds more important. All right, those are my five tips. I hope this has been helpful. Feel free to, as I said, check out that resource, use those prompts. And if you found anything interesting or useful, please uh, leave some comments and let me know. All right. Thank you so much.